In this video, we're going to take a look at box plots and the five number summary. In our last video, 3.3.1, we learned all about the percentiles and the quartiles, but we didn't really talk about when we might use them. So now I want to talk about when we will use the quartiles specifically. When we were finding the quartiles using Excel, we talked a little bit about the fact that you could use Q0 to find the minimum, and you could use Q4 to find the maximum. And that's really what we're doing here is we're finding the five quartiles. And now you might be thinking, wait, quartile quart is four. So why are we finding five values? Well, the quartiles are going to split our data into four parts, each containing 25% of our data. Now, I'm a very visual person, so let's take a look at the visual that we will get when we use the five number summary, which is the minimum, the first quartile, the second quartile, also the median, the third quartile, and the fourth quartile, also the maximum. Now, hopefully you've joined us for our last video because we did the work to find these values for our min, our first quartile, our median, our third quartile and our max. So this is our five number summary. When you're creating a box plot, and typically we're not going to do this by hand, but it's uh, valuable to do it by hand just so you can see how they are constructed. The 12.1, and again, we're just going to assume that I'm very close to 12.1. So 12.1, 19.8, all I'm going to do is put a little dashed line above each of those values as best I can, 23.6, 25.3 and 35.9. The middle three values, 19.8, 23.6, 25.3, which will also be always be the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. That's going to be your box. And then we're going to draw a line to the two outsides. So here's what a box plot does for us, also called a box and whisker plot. The box obviously is the part in the middle and then the whiskers are the two lines connecting the outsides. This breaks our data into quartiles or fourths. Each section is 25%. So this gives us 100% of our data, but essentially what it does is gives us, here's where the first 25% of data lie, here's where the second 25%, the third 25% and the last 25%. It also gives us a good idea of where the middle half of our data is right here in the middle in the box. So now let's talk about IQR and outliers. So here is a little bit better depiction of the box plot that we just created. And I wanna talk about the IQR. So the IQR is called the interquartile range. So we know the range is the greatest number minus the least number, and it gives us some value that tells us how spread out our data is. An interquartile range does the same, except it gives us the range of the middle half of data. So the middle 50% of data. So it's really just a range, but it's using Q3 and Q1 instead of max minus min. So in our example that we've been looking at, I take 25.3, which is my Q3, minus 19.8, which was my Q1, and get an interquartile range of 5.5, which means from here to here has a range of 5.5. Now, that's helpful to know because it tells us how spread out our data is. But another reason the IQR is helpful is it can determine if our data has any outliers. So I can go 1.5 IQRs to the left, and I can go of the first quartile, of course, and I can go 1.5 IQRs to the right of my third quartile, and that's going to give me what's called a fence. And a fence is an imaginary line that we draw that says this is the end of the values that we should expect. And if there's anything outside of the fences, outside of the values, those are considered outliers. They are data values that don't fit with the rest of our data. They are unexpected data. So 
I've done the math already for us here. 1.5 times 5.5, again 5.5 was the IQR and we always use 1.5. That gives me 8.25. Well, I took the first quartile and subtracted that to get 11.55, which is somewhere in here, just to the left of our um, low value of minimum of 12.1. And then I get an upper fence by taking the third quartile and adding 8.25 to get 33.55, which is somewhere in here. Now, what does that tell us? Well, if you'll notice, I've copied just the last couple of rows from our stem and leaf plot. And 33.5 is as far as our data set will take us. So anything up here is okay, and anything down here is an outlier. Well, how is that going to affect my stem and leaf plot? Well, this is how you will expect to see, I'm sorry, a box plot. This is how you will expect to see a box plot that has outliers. Now, the lines that I've drawn here are imaginary, so you will never see those lines. I drew them there so that you could understand what's going on. When you see a box plot, especially when we look at how Excel does this in a minute, you'll see that instead of the maximum value being the end of the whisker, you're going to see the maximum value that's inside the fence, in this case 32.7, is the maximum value of our box and whisker plot. Anything greater than that, in this case 34.5 and 35.9, will be a little dot or an asterisk of some kind that tells us these two values are outliers. Let's take a look now at how Excel will calculate the box plots for us. Notice I've switched back to um, the data set A and data set B that we used previously for the quartiles. So I'm not creating the same box plot we just did by hand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select column A and column B and go to insert. And I think that box plot is hidden somewhere where it doesn't really make sense. And so typically I just go to recommended charts and all charts and then go down to box and whisker and click OK. So notice it's made my box and whisker plot for me. And just as I did before, I would certainly add axis titles. So if it doesn't have them already, um, I think it's only given me one. So I'm going to take both of those. I'm going to, of course, want a chart title. I also want to have data labels. So data labels, and data labels is completely optional. If you want to click on data labels, essentially what's going to happen is it's going to give you those values that we found. Um, notice, I'll make this a little bit easier to understand. I'm going to go ahead and click legend. And on the axis over here, notice nothing happens below 50. So I'm going to change that to a minimum of 50. So that kind of spreads everything out a little bit. And notice now I can see the 64.5 the 50, the 78.25. Now, that does not match what I have up here. Why? Because I used inclusive up here. So all I have to do on my set with an even value is go right click and format data series and just choose inclusive instead. And so again, we did that because it was an even number of values. And now if you'll notice 65, 70.5 and 77.25, which is the same thing I found here using that quartile inclusive. These already match up because it's already um, default set to exclusive. So again, I would change my chart title and my axis titles. Um, actually, I probably would not include this axis title and I would get rid of that silly one because I don't know what's, why it's there. But I would change the axis title over here um, and change the chart title as well. Let's take a look at a few practice questions now in interpreting box plots. So we'll start with which role involved the youngest person and what is the age? So again, on the left hand side, we're looking at age and we're looking for the youngest person. So we're looking for the smallest total value. 
So make sure that you include any outliers um, if there are outliers. So the smallest looks to be right about here, which looks to be a one year old and it's a passenger, hopefully, hopefully a passenger, one year old. The second one, which role had the lowest median age? Remember median is just that middle bar. So we're comparing this value to this value to this value to this value. So which is the lowest? Well, it looks like these two are both about the same. And that would be the cyclist and the passenger and about 22 years old. Let's look at the next. The next is asking for the smallest range. Smallest range. Remember, range would be the greatest value minus the smallest value. And that should include outliers. So for cyclist, that looks to be about 52 minus 11. So 52 minus 11, 41. If I look at the driver, it's 100 down to about 15. So that's going to be much greater than 41. For passenger, again, we're looking at 100 down to basically zero. So that's, uh, or one, so about 99 years. So that's a lot greater than 41. And pedestrian, 80 something to, I don't know, maybe five, again, greater than 41. So what had the smallest range? What is the least spread out? And that is cyclist at about 41 years. Last, we're going to look at the largest IQR. So the largest IQR talks only about the box. So we're basically looking for the biggest box. So let's get rid of all of our markings and looking at just the boxes, which one seems the smallest? It seems to be right here. So again, that box is smaller than other boxes and you can certainly do the math for each of the boxes. Oh, I'm sorry, looking for the largest. So the largest would be the largest box. So that would be here, the pedestrian. So the largest 50% of data. And that would be about 62 years to about 20 years. And again, when we're looking at the IQR, it's a value. So we wouldn't say 62 to 20. We would say 62 minus 20, which is 42 years. So pedestrian, 42 years. Coming up next, we want to take a look at z-scores, which are also a measure of relative position, but are in a class by themselves.